The all-new Honda Civic sets a blistering lap time around the Nürburgring. A new Jaguar wagon, or Jagwag if you will, is coming to North America, and Nissan declares more Nismos for all. This is the Autoguide.com Weekly News Roundup. Well, the times are in, and we knew the new Civic Type R would be fast, but we didn't know it would be this fast. The car now holds the front-wheel drive production record lap time at the Nürburgring, and it managed to shave off seven seconds compared to its predecessor. According to Honda, the Type R lapped the ring in seven minutes and 43 seconds, a full three seconds faster than the previous front-wheel drive record holder, the Volkswagen Golf GTI Club Sport S. Now it's important to note that the car used for the record setting lap was a pre-production model, but Honda insists that the example used was technically representative of exactly what buyers will be able to take home from the dealership. All that was added to the car was a roll cage, while to compensate for that extra weight, the infotainment system and rear seats were removed. As a refresher, the Type R uses a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that makes 306 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque sent through a 6-speed manual transmission only to the front wheels. And if you're out there doubting this car's credentials, this video of it running the ring is bound to change your mind. Jaguar has decided to bring a station wagon version of its new XF to North America, a car that they call the XF Sport Brake. So far, all we've seen of the car is a teaser, but it does confirm that it's going to have a massive panoramic sunroof. In terms of powertrain options, look for the XF Sport Brake to offer the same engines as the regular XF, which means a four-cylinder diesel and a lineup of supercharged V6s will likely be available. Jaguar says that the XF Sport Brake will be on sale in the US later this year. Nissan has decided to pump up its Nismo division, announcing an all new business unit whose entire job is to make sure that more sports cars get built quicker. The new venture is called the Nismo Cars Business Unit, which is a part of a company called Autec Japan. Now, Autec specializes in converted vehicles, and Nissan hopes that with the combined talent there, along with Nissan Motorsports International, more appealing Nismo products can be developed in a shorter period of time. Now, in the US, Nissan currently offers four Nismo models, the 370Z, the GTR, Sentra, and Juke. According to the plan, Nissan wants more Nismo cars to cover new segments, so over the next few years we can expect a lot of fun products from Nissan. Considering all of the news these days on fuel economy regulations and electric vehicles, it's always nice to see an automaker invest some money in the fun side of the business. It seems Tesla just can't stay out of the news, and this week is no different. Earlier in the week, Consumer Reports announced that the Tesla Model S and Model X were having points deducted from their overall test scores. That's because for about the last six months, Tesla has been selling cars without automatic emergency braking, a system that is supposed to be included on all Teslas as standard equipment. Now, Consumer Reports bought one of those cars, and Tesla has continually been telling them that the update was coming, but until now it hasn't shown up, so Consumer Reports had no choice but to remove points from those cars' scores. Now, that means that the Model S was knocked from the top to the third place on Consumer Reports' ultra-luxury car list. Now, initially, Tesla said that automatic emergency braking would be added back to their cars later this week, but when this new report came out, the brand reacted, and right now those Teslas are getting over-the-air updates to include the new feature. Consumer Reports says that once it's added back in, it will then take it back into account and those scores will likely go back up, putting Tesla back on top. Jeep is busy working on a new small pickup truck, and thanks to a new set of spy photos, the new model is coming into focus. Compared to last time we saw a Wrangler pickup truck prototype, these new spy photos shows what looked to be the production bed and wheels. This Wrangler pickup scene here is a four-door unlimited model, and judging by those beefier tires, it's likely in Rubicon trim. Now, yes, it's still covered in camouflage, 
but we can see that the overall shape of this Wrangler pickup truck isn't going to change too much compared to today's Wrangler. The biggest differences seem to be that the grill and the windshield are slightly more raked, likely for better aerodynamics. An all new frame with plenty of new lightweight material in it will support this new Wrangler pickup truck, while the body is rumored to use lots of aluminum to help save weight. As for power plants, we expect the new Wrangler to use a 2 liter turbocharged 4 cylinder as the base engine, but then it will also offer a 3.6 liter V6 and a 3 liter inline 6 diesel. So yes, of course we're excited for the new JL Wrangler to launch as a 2018 model, but I'm really excited for this pickup truck. Bad news is, we have to wait until at least 2019 to see it. Now of course, we've been real busy this past week, with features editor Sammy Hajasad heading to New York City to test out the Nissan Micra. Now the Micra is only available in Canada, but Nissan wanted to see what that small car would be like in the Big Apple. Detroit bureau editor Craig Cole was also busy comparing the Volvo S90 to the new Lincoln Continental. Now that video isn't up on our YouTube channel yet, but stay tuned because it's coming soon. And finally, we leave you with the video this week that looks like every 10 year old boy's dream. Aston Martin opened up its classic heritage collection, a collection worth over $80 million, and turned the keys loose to two professional race car drivers and Aston Martin's chief engineer. Needless to say, tires did not survive that day. Mmm. -hmm.